Tada! A new chapter in my quest for a small fruited super hot chili pepper. Well, this growing season was a little bit difficult, but I did manage to perform an exciting new cross between the Carolina Reaper chocolate, this one, nice and very very hot, and I did take pollen from this plant and transferred it to this Ahi Charapita, a lovely lovely chili variety with many small fruits, very nice. Ah yes, <sighs> I wished I would have known about this variety earlier. Maybe I wouldn't have started with Karayoka back then, with my uh, first attempt at a small fruit support. But anyway, let's do a little harvest. The extreme heat aside, I especially like this stinger-like feature of the fruits of the Carolina Reaper. Unfortunately, uh, it only appeared on this one fruit on my plant. And the others, uh, maybe a little bit like this stinger with the curve of the fruit, but uh, not really. And uh, most of the fruits, almost all others, only have a little stub at the end. Uh. But uh, there are more important features, like... Have a look at this. They are quite small, these fruits. Uh, I think um, it is a result of an emergency ripening, because um, the season is getting to the end and the days are getting shorter. And maybe the plant responded by um, getting the fruits to ripen earlier. So um, maybe there's potential for um, small fruits in this individual. The big ones, the intermediate ones and the small ones. And now the Ahi Charapita. Uh, what I noticed when I picked them off, um, sometimes the stem dries off and the whole fruit drops, but the ripe fruits can easily be detached from the stem. Zack. Plop. I noticed this when I uh, harvested most of them. Very nice. This is the result of my cross-pollinations, as uh, teased in an earlier video. Uh, not all of them uh, did take, like this one, it's only a wilted flower, but um, this was actually the first one that I performed, and it is a nice big fruit, big for an ahi charapita, and bigger fruit, uh, more seeds. So I will cut this one open and extract some fresh seeds. There we go, and uh, behind this wall there are more seeds, but I think I will just leave them in. I think that's already enough uh, for my first seeding. I made a nice little package for the opened fruit for later usage, and now let's uh, separate those seeds carefully. Uh, and there's one more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, oh, that's enough. Oh, there's a little bit of the fruit left. For immediate seeding, I have prepared this old yogurt container with a tomato soil mix, and on top there's a layer of cocoa fiber for the seeds to germinate in, and the roots can then reach the nutrient-rich soil. A little bit of watering down. and an old plastic bag to keep the moisture and warmth in. In a warm windowsill it took less than 10 days for the seeds to germinate and almost all of them did so at the same time. There was only one little straggler there that uh, took a little bit longer and uh, germinated the next day after the others. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Germination rate 100%. Very nice. Now, I don't really need that much because it's an F1 generation and assuming the parents were indeed homozygous, these little plants should all be 
homogeneous and the traits will only be separated and redistributed in the F2 generation and that's where the interesting things are going to happen. Stay tuned!